and green scarecrow, as everyone knows, stood with a bird on his hat and shore everywhere he didn't go. He stood in a field where barley grows. It was a protest against uh, militarism, particularly the, the war which was happening in Vietnam, which Britain appeared to be supporting, at least tacitly. It was, uh, it had many aspects of surrealism and anarchy in it, came coming out of the uh, underground tradition in Edinburgh, the, the fringe theatre there uh, in particular. Where were you at the time of the crime? It had been published in Britain, uh, new ideas on film, uh, particularly from people like Warhol, and also the, the ideas of the poets and, and the political people. We were followed very shortly afterwards by uh, Oz magazine. Oz magazine introduced new techniques of colour printing, new styles of layout and design, and new writers. Its puce and tangerine pages being graced by such disparate names as Germaine Greer and David Widgery. It also trampled hard on contemporary conventions of taste, living its life just half a jump ahead of the Obscene Publications Act. The, the very initial... Way back. Now, what does that mean? That's somebody else's words. <laughs> Why should we get your act this evening? Because I don't have an act. Because in something like this, uh, <laughs> all you can do is dig it. <laughs> you just go where it's going and flow with it. What does that mean? <laughs> do it. Live it. <laughs> it's all here, man. There are God knows how many thousands of beautiful people. Digging it. Don't take pictures of me. Take pictures what, what of them. You, what, what can come out of it? Beautiful people. <laughs> beautiful children are growing up in the hills of San Francisco that are just, we're just so free and so loving. You mean beautiful They're fragile. No, beautiful minds. In the phase of, the, of cultural politics, drugs was a very important uh, element because what they hoped to do by that was to change people's consciousness. It was a very utopian belief that people were addicted to these old routines, you know, to the man in the grey flannel suit and the corporate future and a safe domestic life. But if only their heads could change, they would begin to live a new kind of life. And drugs was the means of expanding their consciousness, changing their consciousness. Turn on, tune in and drop out. The drug to change your consciousness was LSD. The media latched onto it as both visually exciting and morally alarming. It became a religion, with Dr. Timothy Leary, an American psychiatrist, as its high priest. The moral panic was hardly surprising. Apart from Leary, very few people could see how society could have a future if young people chose to spend their time rolling around on carpets with dilated pupils. Neither could many people outside the drug fraternity see the difference between LSD, heroin, marijuana, and the collapse of Western civilization. But although not many people actually took LSD, many more smoked cannabis, or at least didn't see anything wrong with other people smoking it. An advertisement in the Times, pleading for its legislation, attracted signatures from a range of notables. MPs, Vickers, Paul McCartney, David Dimbleby, but law and order had to be maintained. See, the police had powers, and still have, to stop and search anybody suspected of using drugs. And since the image of the person who used drugs would be wearing jeans and have long hair, and maybe look slightly dissolute, uh, that would arouse a policeman's uh, suspicions. And more and more people who weren't carrying drugs or illegal uh, property of one kind or another were being stopped and searched in the streets. And this brought howls of protest from many, and of course, again, brought the police into the firing line of the anti-authoritarian, anti-permissive uh, uh, elements still uh, in society. All we were, we were a bunch of middle-class, um, middle-class idiots um, with no responsibilities and very, very few worries indeed, having a pretty good time producing magazines, newspapers, poster companies, fashion companies, and so on and so forth. And it was only when the long arm of the establishment began to make itself felt up our backside that we began to turn nasty. Now, in other words, we reacted. We weren't, you know, we weren't spearheading some political campaign or anything. Now, it was just that suddenly we felt this, somebody opened the door and we felt this enormous breeze. 
The alternative society pursued different paths. On the one hand, the student protesters were trying to change society. On the other hand, the hippies were trying to change people's heads. To the media, they were all the same. Long-haired, drug-crazed anarchists. We'd seen what had gone on in France, for example. And so, uh, socialism in our time was possible. And then only four months later, it all started to come hanging out. And there was first uh, the economic statement in July 19. You got good. I recognise that in a very worthy cause it was too. It features some of what they call the biggest names in British rock and roll. Unfortunately, about ten years on, they all look a bit like double glazing salesmen, but they sure can play a mean guitar. So here they are, the long-haired gentlemen, and after that, you're going to be seeing BB King. <laughs> 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 